I mean, when I wake up and I'm like, my numbers just jump five or 10,000 followers without me doing anything. And I'm looking, I go over to Leonardo DiCaprio's page and he's just, you know, just people I really respect as artists, you realize that they're all people who just care. How has social media changed the game for you? It's, it's been incredible. You know, I thought it was a joke four years ago when a couple friends, my buddy Sam Kretschmar and uh, Jenny Nichols both came to me and said, hey, dude, you need to get on Instagram. I'm like, come on, I'm not gonna, I would not reduce my photography, you know, which I see as fine art and beautiful or for magazines into little wee squares on, A, you don't really ever crop your images like that and why would I do that? And all of a sudden, I put up a couple of posts and I actually baited people from National Geographic to my feed. I got 45,000 new followers one day in three hours. <laughs> and uh, you know, within a year I'd hit a million followers and I was like, whoa. And then when I opened my gallery in New York, um, you know, I said, hey guys, come on down to the gallery and meet me. I'll be here and we can talk about conservation. And you know, 3,000 people showed up and there's a lineup around the city block in the rain. We had to hire a, a uh, buddy, a, a guy I know now, Drago from Serbia, to come in as a bouncer to control the crowds and people are coming in like crying and hugging and just, I think people are looking for leadership, they're looking for guidance, they're looking for direction, they're looking for hope and uh, it's, it's been, become a very powerful thing for me to realize that there are real passionate, smart, intellectual people at the other side of those in, in Instagram followers. It's not just a number of who has how many followers, it's the engagement that I have with my audience that I love, that I can put up a post and talk about an issue, have 10,000 comments on one post. That's 10,000 comments, and those are people debating, discussing, negotiating. I think it's powerful, and forget how many, you know, if you get a million likes on a post, great, but I care about the engagement, and that's to have a really uh, engaged audience is important to me. Who have you been most surprised has reached out to you through social media? I mean, when I wake up and I'm like, my numbers just jump five or 10,000 followers without me doing anything. And I'm looking, I go over to Leonardo DiCaprio's page and he's just, you know, I don't know if it's him, but it's his people, I guess. But they share a lot of content on his feed. Or, you know, you know, Kelly Slater's writing me and like, how do I get involved? And it's just like, really? And Eddie Vedder just invited us to his concert uh, this week because he cares about the environment and wants to, you know, talk about Sea Legacy. And then Bride Adams and I are friends through conservation, you know, so just people I really respect as artists, you realize that they're all people who just care. Um, and, and there's just a lot of people are starting to come to the surface. Your favorite experience you've had with any of these people that you spend time with? I was working in Svalbard, Norway, and my friend Sean Powell and I were just like living in this dirty little tent, and it's like wet, wet, and we're cold, and we've been eating freeze-dried food for two months, and I get a phone call from the National Geographic ship, and they're like, hey, can you come on board tonight? If we move the ship up the coast, we're here with some people, and can you come out and do a talk? I'm like, yeah, sure, I need a shower anyway, and I need this resupply of food, and so we take the Zodiac 150 miles down the coast of Svalbard. We meet up with the ship, I go shower, and I come out, to do a talk and it's a you know it's a narrow quarters and we're in the front row is uh, President Carter, uh, Rosalind Carter, Ted Turner, Larry Page, uh, Madeline Albright and it just sort of each row was was a Chevy Chase I mean just went uh, on and on and on in the ship and I'm just like I haven't talked to another person except Sean for two months and all of a sudden here I am to deliver the keynote that evening and um, it was powerful then the next day to take you know President Carter and Rosalind Carter out in a in a zodiac and to show them show them walrus you're up there with walrus and they're understanding the importance of sea ice and multi-year ice and with the loss of ice it's going to affect species like walrus it's just a very powerful time to spend time like that with somebody of influence how, how do you reconcile when you're spending time with somebody of influence you know and their desire to help out with the fact that they just flew in on their private jet or own, you know, a dozen homes around the world. I mean, I get the same thing as well. And if I listened to every one of my social media followers, I would wear, live in a hemp sack. I would not have a cell phone. I would never have flown in my life. I would not ever have a vehicle. I would live on a, you know, a deserted desert island. But somehow, I would still be as effective in the work that I do in conservation. And this, you just have to. Of course, we all have an impact and an imprint on this planet. My impact or where I've made a difference is by not having kids, you know, trying to go vegetarian, uh, working closer and closer to that, you know, just trying to minimize my impact. But sure, I get on an airplane to go do a conservation project. I fly with my excess baggage. And so I don't, you know, if Al Gore is going around the world um, flying almost daily doing lectures on conservation and, and climate change, then, you know, sure, you can always shoot the messenger. You can always find a way to poke holes in people. But I always try and choose to celebrate the good that they're doing.